All right, one of these videos. Uh, I guess first thing we do is lay down the 3D prints. We gotta, we gotta make it clack when it hits the table so we get that ASMR in the edit. Although not for this one because I'm obviously talking over it. Some stranded wire with PVC rubber. The stripper for that wire. I guess we'll do some of the screws. M320, need six of these. All right. Um, M3 8, see how I changed the 6 to an 8? You wouldn't have known unless I told you because it's seamless, right? M3 set screw, pen spring, some DuPont connectors, one 1x1, one 2x1, one, one one, and one 3x1. One. We've got a sampler pack going on. Whoop. Little piece of heat shrink. If we got these DuPont connectors, we need the, the pins. So the male and where's the and the female. Whoops. The male and the female. One, two, three, four. One of these crimps for the DuPont connectors. While I'm at it, a lighter for the heat shrink. Let's see, a touchscreen stylus tip. One of these guys. N20 little gearbox, so something like this. The gearbox, the reduction. It's fancy, right? Uh, something for the grub, something for the M3 sockets. Um, and this one I could use for the grub, but but in previous builds I found that this was actually stripping the the drive for the grub. So um, you know we got a separate thing for it. Anyways, we'll put that there. Some scotch tape. I know we got the wire strippers right there, so this will probably actually do the job of the scissors if you want. But this is how I roll, so. Put these down here, and then a USB cable. You don't mind shredding up. Uh, let's organize this a bit. Okay, first thing we want access to the wires inside. So, chopping it up. There's gonna be four wires in there: a white, green, red, and black. We're only concerned about the. Why oh, I have dirt in my hands? We only care about the uh, the red and the black. That's the uh, the power. Uh, maybe expose this far back and see if we can bend it to break for the rest of it. If not, then we just try again. Obviously, make sure not to cut the wires on the inside, just the outside um, rubber sheathing. There we go. Yep. All right, we don't need the data lines, so I'm just gonna move them out of the way. I could just cut them off, but you know, I'm a hoarder, so you never know, right? Or maybe you do, and this is just a bad habit. We actually need two grounds, so we're going to split this up. That's what the three is for. One's going to be the power, and the other two is going to be the grounds. Let's get a little bit of wire here. It's going to be crumpled in a bit, but that's fine. Let's see about that much. That's good. And then this is a little bit weird, but it should work. Just put in the folded area to strip out the back. We got some straggling rubber. Strip these also. We'll twist all the end strands we have. We'll merge these in together. I don't know the best way to do this, so I'm just twisting until everything seems to stick. All right, heat shrink. Let's not overdo it, just take what we need. Move that over, heat it up, but don't set anything on fire. If stuff starts to smoke, uh, pull back. Okay, I'm going to pull it back and it's going to be a line like that in the connector. So these are going to be female. I usually use the second one and then after the initial crimp I recrimp it on the first one. That's probably not uh, best practices but that's just how I do it. Make sure to get a little plastic in so that the, um, the connector can hug onto it. So it's in and then a little bit more for the plastic. Yeah, and then to the first one, there we go, we'll do that two more times. In the wires and then a little bit of the plastic. I think that's in enough. Hopefully. Yeah, it's good. There we go. It's got some extra stuff here. We can either cut that off or try to move it out of the way. Take our three by one. Is it three by one or one by three? At any rate. Um when it's far enough in, you should kind of feel a snap and it shouldn't um, easily come back out. All right. 
Also electrical power source. This one's got the little USB things here. All right, here's the motor. We could probably use a little bit more exposed like strip wire at the end, so let's do that. Now this might be fine, but you know, I feel like a little bit more would make me more comfortable. Okay, we'll take two of these males. All right, wire, plastic, crimp. One more time. All right, push these through, perhaps pull them through. There's one. I could hear a small, uh, small click. There's two. All right. Make sure red matches with red, black and black. There we go. What kills me here is if you listen to how silent this is, which is like pretty much dead silent. This is the most silent it's ever gonna be. It's gonna get super loud after this. Let's get some extra brown colored wire. Two males on the ends and then only one of them gets the connector housing. This, and then I do like an edit effect afterwards. Something like that, did it pop into place correctly? So this is gonna be the bottom. Um, let's see, bottom, back, left. This is gonna be the arm here. I'm just gonna tap like that. Let's get that one in with an M3 20 millimeters. We want this as tight as possible while still letting this turn freely. We just wanna make sure it doesn't, it can't move like along this axis. There we go. Another M20 for this axis here. The head sockets on the back. We want this just tight enough that this can move easily, but not on its own. Still too tight. It's too loose. There we go. In case anyone's wondering, uh, this up here and this down here is for a catch for like a, to loop a rubber band around. I don't use that feature. Uh, it was like an idea that I put in and then I never removed. But actually, I keep it around as an option, just in case, like, uh, you know, it doesn't hurt. Let's put these two screws in, more M320s. And we just want to put it in enough to where the, the screws are flush with the ends here. There's that one, and there's that one. All right, uh, actually, one more, and we'll put that up top here. And we just want this uh, threaded in just to where it's poking out a little bit, maybe a millimeter or two. Then we'll place this on here to where these line up with these and then we'll continue threading them through. Uh, do a little bit of each until they're both like very secure in there then you can focus on one of them. Ooh, uh, that could be done better. Retry, redo. All right. It's better. Put an M38 up here just so it stays in place we don't actually want it um visible when looking down here not yet at least motor piece here put that in that should slide right in there and then this gear we want to check for this flat part right there and make sure that this uh the hole here lines up with that and then we can put in the grub that'll lock these two pieces in together actually we could probably start it um off of the motor first there we go then we can look down the shaft here, line it up, flat side with the grub, and then continue tightening it until it won't go any farther in because it's already locked in place there. And then we'll make sure that this stays locked in here by putting a screw that's gonna push it into place. Do not over tighten this, just get it to where you can feel that it's touching. Or actually, once it's in there, untighten it, push up a bit here, and then retighten it. Uh, that shouldn't really make a visible difference, but I find that uh, when we actually get the gear train all assembled, that uh, oddly enough, that does make a difference on how well it meshes. We'll get this other gear there, take our last M320, get it tightened in. And again, we want it tightened enough just so that uh, it can turn, well, I guess you can't really tell at this point if it can turn loosely, but don't over tighten this, okay? Right there, it's a little too firm. Untighten it just a bit. That should be good. Let's see, spring goes in here. 
locks in with this notch and the notch created from the screw we put in. Make sure you have control of it and that doesn't go flying off. All right, there we go. And then you could probably tighten the screw to be about a third downwards, maybe a third to a half. I think a third's good. So right about there. All right, and we're pretty much there. Let's see it reciprocate. All right, so let's see, the gears aren't skipping, it's rotating, it's freaking loud. I told you it would be loud. Um, let's see, it's got the right tap timing from the cam there. This is essentially it. And then there's some adjustments we need to make after we put in the stylus, but also remember we do have this hinge, that's also for adjustment. It's also just for um, a quick disable, so if you ever need to disable it, you can, instead of turning off the power, just push this back. Last thing to do, put in the stylus here. Uh, you don't have to be all the way up. In fact, you should be a little downwards, maybe a millimeter or two. With this wire here, take the side that doesn't have the connector housing, stick that also up top so that um, these two metal parts should be connecting and placed in at both ends. And then tighten. You don't have to crush them together, but you want to hold them in place and make sure that they're pushed together to touch. All right, then we'll plug this into here, into the other ground. And remember, if this is going too low to where it's lifting off, you can just um, angle this. I uh, taped it into place here. You can see that's upgrading the damage. You know, because it's too loud, I leave it in another room and just walk away from it. Okay, if I want to take a pause, lift it up for a second. And then if I go to end round, and I say, yeah, end round. We'll notice that the button I was hitting to um, do the upgrades is also the button to retry. So once the game ends, um, it can restart another game and go as far as it can with this one upgrade and do that forever. Um... And you could be asking, is it worth it? Could I just not play this game? The answer is, uh, it's not worth it, and I could stop, but I refuse to. And then obviously when I'm out of money, it's not going to buy anything. It's just going to be a, um, a tap that does nothing. But when I do have money, it'll go back to making the purchases.